Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Thank you so much for joining us for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Tiffany Lee. So let's get right to weather with our 5 News meteorologist Stephen Abshire. We have a 5 News red weather alert day for Friday, so we're going to break down what that means. And we're taking a look at the forecast for the rest of the weekend. Hey, Stephen. Hey, Tiffany. Yeah, for Friday, we're going to have a red alert for weather alert because we have a chance for some severe storms as we get into the second half of Friday. Taking a look at what to expect, this low pressure system is going to be making its way off toward the east, bringing a chance for some strong storms to be moving in as we get into Friday afternoon and especially into the evening as that line pushes through. Taking a look at future casts, really breaking down what to expect as we get into the middle of the afternoon for Friday. We're going to see some of these showers begin to move into the area out of eastern Oklahoma and crossing the state lines into five country northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. But as we get later on into the rest of the afternoon and evening by six o'clock, this main line of storms will slowly be making its way across the area, bringing the chance for some really gusty winds, heavy rain and a couple of isolated tornadoes are possible. All these ingredients for some severe weather for today. But as we get later on into the evening, it'll slowly move out to the east and then behind it, as we get into Saturday, really going to be drying out a, a lot and then cooler air on the tail end of it, but not having to worry about any rain as we get into the weekend. Taking a look at what we can expect in terms of severe weather, almost all of five country has the possibility to see some damaging winds as that line pushes through later on the day on Friday. That main line is really going to be the biggest threat, but we could see a few spin ups of tornadoes or tornado worn storms as we move later on into the afternoon and through the evening because some of those storms out ahead of that main line could have enough rotation to drop a tornado or two but for right now that main concern in terms of wind is still going to be those damaging winds along that line but we could see some hail along the line and in front of the storm as well with some of those tornado worn systems but as we get later on into the day really we're not going to have to worry about rainfall because that flooding risk is going to be low because that rain will be moving through pretty quickly but for this weekend we can expect temperatures in the 60s for tomorrow much cooler and then for Sunday we're back into the 70s so warming up but we can expect clear skies pretty much all weekend. It's going to be fairly nice as we get into this weekend after all the rain that will get on Friday. But on Saturday, we can expect those temperatures back into the 40s, 42 in Fayetteville, 45 for low in Fort Smith. But for that game in Razorback Stadium for homecoming for Arkansas versus Liberty, we're going to be relatively nice. We're going to be in the 60s, so a little bit cooler, but sunny skies pretty much all afternoon. A really nice Saturday for November, but for the next seven days, we can expect to get out of those 60s, get into the 70s as we get into the middle start of the week for Northwest Arkansas, and we're gonna stick into the 70s to wrap up the week as well. And then for the River Valley, could see uh, 80 here or there as we get into the middle of the week, but we're starting the week in the 70s, a little bit of a rain chance on Monday, but unseasonably warm is the characteristic for this week. Thanks for that, Stephen. So we're learning more about what happened to a pregnant Benton County mother and her baby. Investigators have now confirmed that Ashley Bush and her baby are no longer alive. The McDonald County Sheriff said that deputies got a call on Monday night about a newborn baby not breathing. EMS stopped the suspects in this case, a husband and a wife, Amber and Jamie Waterman. They were on their way to the hospital and tried to revive the infant, but the child died. The sheriff said that Amber claimed the baby was hers. Five News reporter Catherine Gilker joins us to break down this case. Ashley Bush and her baby were found dead in Missouri after last being seen on Monday afternoon. The sheriff's office says the two were found in different locations in Missouri. Two people are now behind bars in connection with the crime. Amber Waterman and her husband Jamie Waterman were booked into the McDonald County Jail this afternoon. They are being held on federal kidnapping charges, but more charges are likely to come. The sheriff's office says Amber Waterman was posing as a fake character named Lucy. Waterman and Bush connected online, according to investigators, as Bush searched for a work from home job. Bush's fiance says he last saw her around 3 o'clock on Monday. According to initial reports, she spent the day with the suspect at a job interview in Bentonville. They were supposed to return to the handy stop to meet Bush's fiance. After getting a text they were close, he says he saw the truck turn onto Highway 43 and drive north. And that was the last time he saw his fiance. Investigators confirmed Ashley died from an apparent gunshot wound. Her baby girl was just 31 weeks. When asked if there was a motive, the Benton County prosecutor Nathan Smith says a motive will have to play out with the facts. This is just a reminder that, that there is evil in the world. People do evil things. And uh, that someone would uh, prey upon a, a pregnant woman 
um, you know, her most vulnerable state is unimaginable. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, that's the world we live in. We know the next step will be for Ashley and her baby's bodies to be sent to the crime lab for autopsy. Reporting. Now, the distance between Maysville and Benton County and Pineville, Missouri, and McDonald County, it's not that far. The two small towns are about 28 miles apart. Again, the suspects, Jamie Waterman and his wife, Amber, are currently in the McDonald County Jail. Both of them are facing federal kidnapping charges. According to the McDonald County Sheriff, the suspect should be taken to a federal facility in Springfield within the next week. They could also face additional charges. According to our CBS affiliate in Joplin, authorities claim that human remains found at the Waterman's home belong to Ashley Bush. And as we mentioned earlier, the baby was reportedly found on Monday unresponsive with the Waterman's. Josh Willis is the fiance of Ashley Bush. He's been speaking to five news for the past few days while authorities searched for Ashley. He's been pleading for his fiance's return. And today he tells us that he's devastated and disgusted with the whole situation. He's currently surrounded by his loved ones. Willis went on to say in quote that Ashley was a great mother, a wonderful wife and a very outgoing, caring and kind person. The family was praying for Ashley and her baby to come home safely. But now they say that they are going to support each other through this difficult time. Now let's get to some news that you might have missed this week. A hiker missing for four days is found alive after he went missing on the Buffalo National River. Five News reporter Rachel Williams gives us an update on how the hiker was found. 67-year-old Clinton Smith was reported missing on October 28th by his family after he failed to return from the hike. Sheriff Glenn Wheeler says rescue teams found him in good condition. But he had endured some pretty bad weather, uh, some, some torrential rain and uh, some temperatures down into the 40s, which 40s doesn't sound dangerous, but when you combine low temperatures like in the 40s and, and being wet, it can be fatal. Um, Thankfully, that, that didn't occur. Although he was in a good condition, Wheeler and nearby campers say when the rescue teams found him, he was disoriented. That's one of the classic symptoms of hypothermia. Um, plus, not to mention he's dehydrated and hasn't eaten in several days to speak of. And he'd eaten some berries and stuff along the way, but really wasn't nourished, you know, and, and it was just uh, absolutely exhausted. I mean, he was... Uh, he was to the point that he was not able to walk much anymore. Campers say it comes as no surprise to learn that a hiker went missing because of how isolated the National Park is. This is a basically a, a wilderness area without, you know, you don't have paved paths and a lot of, a lot of uh, directional signs. There are trail markers, but it's easy to wander off a trail uh, and, uh, you know, have, have some trouble relocating it, so you've got to you've got to be attentive. According to the National Park Service, the terrain around the National River can be rugged, steep, and easy to get lost. He encountered a, a tree across the trail, and he went around that, and then when he came back in, he found where a couple of trails had converged, and he was confused about which trail it was. Um, that and darkness was approaching and um, at some point darkness was approaching um, and, and of course temperatures were dropping so it just was a recipe for for him to get lost. In the future, the sheriff encourages hikers who want to visit the National Park to do their research, prepare and have insulated clothing for this time of year. The higher interest rates are also impacting many credit cards. It comes as many begin holiday shopping, and those shopping lists can start to add up quickly. You might even consider getting another credit card as a way to help you pay. Jalissa Garza shows us why financial experts say you need to be careful. The pandemic impacted people in different ways, including their budgets. There was definitely a lot more concern about the future, the direction. Financial advisor Eric Stoffel says inflation added to the stress leaving some people looking for another way to pay their bills, credit cards. Maybe there's a short-term job loss and really bills are due. And if the money's not in the bank, it still needs to be taken care of. Economic forecaster Michael Paco says inflation is impacting the interest rate on those cards. They've increased over the course of this year, just from the beginning of this year until uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, by about 2.4%. Uh, and he says there's a chance that's not changing anytime soon. I think it's quite likely that credit card increase in, in interest rates will continue to increase over the next several months. For those thinking about getting an extra credit card to check items off their holiday shopping list, Stoffel says you have to consider if it will help or hurt you in the long run.
When you compound 8% inflation, 16.5% interest on that, you're talking north of 25% extra cost to buy that gift for somebody. Stoffel adds evaluating your finances is key before making any big decisions. The next three to four years potentially for some people to pay back that consumer credit debt is a little bit difficult and you want to be a little bit cautious right now. And having a game plan for after is just as important. Once you spend that credit card money, that debt is incurred, and now you're in that situation moving forward. And you may know the name Sasha Goforth, one of the greatest girls basketball players to come through Northwest Arkansas, and last year, one of the leaders of the Razorbacks women's basketball team. But with all that success that has come on the court, 5 News Sports Director Jacob Seuss is telling us about a side of Sasha that you might not know about. We say this all the time to kids, don't let basketball become who you are. Sasha Goforth is every basketball coach's dream. McDonald's All-American, Jordan Brand All-Classic, five-star on ESPN. By the way she played, I mean, it would be natural to think that this kid's on top of the world. She was open with me. Uh, her and her dad were open with, with myself uh, and uh, a select few of my coaching staff. Players didn't know about it. Gastroparesis. Uh, in simple terms, it just means like delayed emptying of the stomach. You hear like delayed emptying of the stomach and you don't think like, oh, she's waking up every single morning throwing up. We saw this uh, unfortunate deterioration of her body. Just She started breaking down and physically not gaining weight and getting very ill and not able to perform at the level she wanted to. It all started her senior year at Fayetteville High School. I remember this one specific game. It was an important game. And like on the court, like mentally, like I was fighting myself so much because like I just wanted to like give up and like run off the court and throw up. Um, but it was a really important game. So I was pushing, pushing through. And I remember like I literally, my body truly just like gave out, like my arms dropped, my legs dropped, it felt like I couldn't run anymore. Fighting through, she dominated her senior year, getting calls from all corners of the country, an exciting but stressful decision. I think what people don't understand about my disease is it is completely depending on how stressed I am. Despite the stress of moving, Goforth chose to go across the country. Going into it at Oregon State, I was confident that I'd be able to navigate through it okay. Turning down a chance to go across the street and become a Razorback. That's a hard decision for a kid to make. Uh, and it takes a lot of bravery to pick the phone up and tell somebody no. Uh, and, and she did. In her first season at Oregon State, Goforth started every game, earning all Pac-12 honors. But the stress of her disease only got worse. I wake up every single morning. I'm sitting by the toilet throwing up. She knew a change was needed. Goforth had to come home. Knowing that it was that bad, I was just very confident in Coach Neighbors and like this program to the point where I knew it wouldn't like, it wouldn't be them hindering my mental health. Once she hit the floor at Bud Walton Arena, it was the same old Goforth starting every single game. Going through what I knew she was going through, that, that only a select few of us knew, and she's playing an unbelievable 30 plus minutes a game at, a, at an SEC level, at a high, and she didn't want anybody to know about it. It was very hard for me, to, like to play and like not have people understand like what I'm going through. Go forth, put up a facade that fooled everyone. But once the final whistle blew each night, she was struggling more than ever. It's not like I needed sympathy, like I didn't need that. I just wanted people to understand like why I couldn't go get that extra rebound. You wanted to protect her, you just wanted to wrap your arms around her all the time. This last spring, as the season ended, Goforth made one of the hardest decisions of her life. I just, I can't do this to myself anymore, like, I just, I can't. If that person has got to that point and they're brave enough to say it, they've already made their decision. Taking a step back from the game she loves. Tears, and both of us, it's really emotional because I knew how much she loved basketball. With the fall semester in full swing, 
For the first time since early childhood, Go Forth isn't on a basketball roster. Complete like support and like love and understanding um, and saying like, we're still here for you. Like you're still a part of this team. For now, she's focused on getting healthy. And this morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. from nausea, you know, so it's something I'm still struggling with. But when asked if she would ever return to basketball. Yes, 100 percent. For that, we'll just have to wait and see. We say this all the time to kids. Don't let basketball become who you are. And that's what she's doing. What an inspiring story. Well, thank you so much for watching the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Tiffany Lee. Have a great weekend.